Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to It's Really None of Our Business podcast with Monica and Amanda. Hi. This is a show where we open a bottle of wine and we attempt to solve the problems of the world. And I'm already like half in. Like, yeah. I, I know this, you guys, you guys drink this wine a lot, but okay, we're like recording three episodes in a row and we're still drinking this. And now the bottle's like yeah. almost gone and Monica's joking and... You know, the conversation gets a little more free because we're drinking. That's true. Yeah. We changed our shirts this time to try to trick you guys and make you think it was a different day, but yeah, it's yeah. not. It's a little not. behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. What's so, going on? What's happened with what you this week? What is going on? Not much. You know, life is, it's like Groundhog Day. Nothing changes. <laughs> There's nothing to look forward to. We, as you guys know, yeah. uh, I have a six and a four year old. These kids like to go swimming. Pools have not been open in over a year. I didn't know that. Nothing is open, Monica. Nothing huh. is open. You think so. that the germs would wash away with the chlorine? There's, I don't know, maybe like the change rooms. I don't know what the issue is. So anyways, we've seen a couple of our friends on Facebook do this idea where you book a hotel with a pool. Yeah. And a lot of them will let you reserve the pool for an hour and it's just for your family. So what? I found a pool 10 minutes from our house, like a hotel, just a super eight, like a yeah, crappy yeah. dumpy hotel. But we booked it. It was a hundred dollars, 10 minutes from our house. And we did it on Friday night. So we went there, we checked in, we booked the pool for six 30 to seven 30. So we like, Got the kids happy meals. Me and Karsten got our dinner. We just like ate on the hotel beds. And our kids had never stayed in a real hotel before. We've stayed in lots of Airbnb. Did you actually stay? Yeah, we slept in the yeah. hotel. So we had, you know, we did our dinner and then we all went down with our, to the uh, hotel pool and it had a slide and the kids, a hot tub and the kids just played for an hour and it was fun. And we had music huh. blasting because we brought a speaker. Because you're all by yourself. Yeah, you get the pool to yourself. So we had like the our family huh. in the pool for an hour. Could you have invited more people? Could you have said. They wouldn't have let it. We have six children. Maybe. You maybe could have like mm-hmm. done a but then who, birthday party. Who would want to yeah. uh, take other people's children? Not me. Yeah. <laughs> so we we did that, and then we like did a we let the kids stay up super late. We played Monopoly on like the hotel bed, and like ate snacks and watched a movie. We huh. brought our little like Amazon Fire Stick. It was just like it was a shitty hotel, just like a yeah regular hotel room. And then the next morning, we were booked in at nine o'clock in the morning. We went swimming again, checked out. We were home by like ten fifteen in the morning. Like it was just like a nice. But it sounds like a like it's a super fun yeah. little vacation. Yeah. Okay, now here's the thing. Like, I think this makes you like an awesome parent because you're finally okay. Because okay, <laughs> you're doing these things that your kids are gonna like. But okay, so I think about you know you talk so much about how you, what your relationship is with Colton and you find him frustrating and yeah. stuff. What is your earliest childhood memory? Like, like how old is Colton? Six? He's six. So like, I bet you can't even remember anything from that. Point. I so don't have all these cool street, yeah. things that you're doing with him. He's not even gonna remember. I know. I do think of that too because as they were running around and playing and going down the slide, and Colton's like jumping in. He's were you like taking being, pictures or anything. I took a few, but I'm not yeah. really a big picture person. Like yeah. me and Carson are just in the hot tub, like enjoying the moment. And I'm like, this is very nice. Like our kids yeah. are having a good time. Like we're good parents. Like I'm happy that we're doing this. And we're, yeah, like, we. We did everything they wanted that night. Like we were eating like chips in bed and stuff. I'm not you. I don't know if yeah, you know yeah. me, but like that's not the kind of person I am. I'm like get your chip hands out of bed. You're like, not a you're not a chip in the bed kind of girl. That's not me. But actually, I let them do it in Carson's bed because me I had Colton in my bed and then Carson and Kenna slept in one bed. Like it was uh, it was fine. Yeah, like yeah. it was a good night. But I was like every time Colton was trying to eat in the bed, I'm like go to your dad's bed. You're not. Oh doing my god. <laughs> So I am an asshole. It is what it is. So speaking of like chips in the bed made me think of something that you were just saying right now. So I recently washed all my sheets and then I have a mattress protector yeah. and it wrecked the mattress protector. It shredded the, the washing. it. Does? Yeah. Which is weird. It's maybe it's five years old. So it Aww. shredded the plastic part. Aww. So then I was looking for a new one on Amazon and, and the comments on it were like, yeah, it's good for eating in bed. My husband spills wine and, and it's like, doesn't get through. And I'm like, who the fuck eats and drinks in bed? That's like your friends that interviewed me on their podcast. Yeah, they're not my friends. They're your friends. They're they're our friends. Like, I know them because of you. If you're listening, we're talking about you guys. <laughs> yeah. But they interviewed me on their podcast, and they were saying, like, telling me the story about how they were eating food in bed, like, huge plethora of snacks. And all I could think He's is, like, like how many, cr- like, go to the living room. Turns out they didn't have a living room to eat their yeah, snacks yeah. in. But, like. I, I, I think I would eat standing over the sink. Like, mm. I don't eat in bed. It's not my thing. No, I don't. What, okay, so Greg, <laughs> Greg is, is Greg is like um, somebody who would never allow me to eat yeah. in bed. Like, That's he's... Man after my own heart. Yeah, he's like, he's the guy who's like, what? He would, I could see him like twitching. vibrating, twitching. Yeah. If, I, if I ever even considered it. 
But I don't think yeah. I've ever ate in bed in my past. Like maybe, you know what? I've got to tell you something. I have this chocolate chip addiction. So every night before I used to go to bed, when I was living on my own, like, you know, pre-Greg, yeah. I used to get a glass and I'd put like a mm. quarter cup of chocolate chips in it and I would take it up to bed with me. That's okay. And I would just like, I would eat a couple of chocolate chips and sometimes that quarter glass would last me like two or three days. That's fine. And so that's my, that would be my eating and I don't have a lot of issue against something like that. Even sometimes like if I'm like kind of getting ready to go out sometime, mm-hmm. but it's like I'm getting ready doing my hair. I'm often, I have the TV on, I'm like curling my hair or whatever it is and it's like, oh, I happen to be hungry. I'll like go downstairs and get whatever and I'll like have my fork in. But, it'll, but you're not eating in bed I'm not sitting up like maybe I'll like sit down for a second and have a bite but then it'll be like I'll be on the it'll sit on the dresser and like I'm just but you wouldn't you bedroom. wouldn't say let's go watch a movie and then let's watch it in bed and then we eat. aren't we have a tv in our room for me like while I fold laundry and get ready and stuff yeah. like we don't really watch tv in bed Carson especially if he's watching tv like hit he, he doesn't even bring his phone into our bedroom wow he is the person who's like, the bedroom is for sleeping. Like, it's weird. I no, be, no, I don't I think it's weird. I should be more like him, but I can't. My phone needs to be in, I need to scroll while I'm falling asleep. But like, yeah, well, if I'm like, oh, I'm just like kind of lazy if we're going to watch a movie or something, let's go to bed. He's like, I'd rather not. Like, very rarely can I convince him. If we're going to watch a movie, it's in the living room. And I, then you can eat snacks. I think that's great. Mm-hmm. I, I think, because we eat snacks in, in the living room when we watch TV. And oh my God, if I could take them into bed and continue eating... I'd be the size of a fucking house. That's two houses. That's actually a good point. Maybe what we should do for our diet is only watch TV in bed, and then you're not allowed to have snacks, and then you lose weight. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Am I on to something? Yeah. We're no longer going to watch, because all we do is watch fucking TV nowadays. You can only put yourself in places where you're not allowed to eat. So then, uh. no eating. No getting Yeah, but once fat. I start drinking, it's... Yeah, all <laughs> the rules are out. That's true. Okay, so here's my thought, and I just actually just thought of it. I spend so much time on my phone. Like, Do you I... get a screen... Like, Apple phones send the screen report how many... No. How, how long you're on it per week, and it tells you if you're up or down. No. I was wondering if you... No, because I don't have an Apple. I have a Samsung. Yeah, and I, I don't know if Samsung I don't does know that. if there's... A, you, there's probably an app Might be a setting or something you can... But... I spend, like, I seen this meme the other day, and it was um, somebody snorting apps. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I went, oh, my God. I spend what are your main every apps that you're on? waking hour on my phone. What are your, So like- I go through, um, I look at my stock, my stocks, and I, I have a cryptocurrency on there, and it, and it fluctuates even on the weekends and even at night. So I'm like checking it. I bet I check it every hour. Wow. Like insane. Okay. And then Facebook yeah. and Reddit mm-hmm. and Inst- Instagram. I kind of like, I lose interest in Instagram. Oh. So sometimes I'm really into it. Instagram and pulls I'm, me in. And, and, but a lot of times I'm just like, I can't do Instagram. So, and then there's Snapchat. Oh, I don't know. So, but my daughter and her friends are on Snapchat. So then I see their Snap stories. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but I do this thing where I'm not really that interested in TV. So Greg's watching TV and so from six till I go to bed, I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling. With and the, I, the TV on in the background. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to the bathroom and I'm scrolling and then, yeah. then I'm going to bed and I'm scrolling and yeah. I'm scrolling. And you probably watched that, that uh, Netflix show on. Social on, Dilemma. Oh my God. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is me. I'm going to stop using social media. And I can't. Yeah, I know. I can't. And I remember a time, like, I remember, like, do you, like, when I was in a kid and I used to drive to BC, we would just fight with our siblings in the back and we would communicate and dinners were talking to each other. And I just sit there and, like, me and Greg eat dinner on the couch mm-hmm. and I'm scrolling and we're watching TV. It's not that I'm saying that we're not talking. Yeah. But I know it's a problem. Like, yeah. I can feel that I can no longer... I can't go without it. It's definitely like I will, I have this thing on my phone where around, it's like the bedtime setting. So it knows what time I'm supposed to go to bed. You yeah. set it. And then like around like 45 minutes before it go, it turns all your notifications off. So it doesn't <gasps> notify you. And then it. But what if someone needs to get hold of you? <laughs> you don't hear it. Oh. Like, unless you open up your phone and look. I can, Cause I, if, if you notice, like if you text me after like nine fifteen and You're I don't responding. respond yeah. it's because I haven't checked my phone. I have to physically like open it up to check it. But it's cause ideally I need to be in like going to bed mode. The problem though is I, even though I have that setting, I still like plug my phone in at night and I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed now. And then it's like something, it's like a magnet. Yeah. I just need to like, yeah. 
And then an hour has passed and I'm like swiping Instagram yeah. or watching Stupid. people's stories. And I'm like, I don't even really care about this. Yeah. Like, and, and, and it's even, okay, so I work out. And so I turn on the Peloton app and I go on my bike and I work out and my phone is over here. And I'm thinking about the phone Interesting. while I am exercising. Like I wonder I'm, if I'm getting any notifications. Yeah. Am I getting any notifications? Yeah. Like, or is someone yeah. trying to call me? Someone getting, like, I am thinking, this is ridiculous. And I think that I have, I have a problem. Have you made any, like, plans in your head, like, semi-plans that, like, you kind of want to, like, cut back? Well, it's like, I think it's like a drug addiction, yeah. you like, or a food addiction. Tomorrow will be better. I'll do better tomorrow. But then I think, but I don't, but I don't want to. Yeah. And, and I feel like, well, it's not hurting me. And then even if I go out for a run, I'm just, I'm turning on my, bringing my phone and I'm listening to music. Like my yeah. phone is with me. Like you need your phone for lots of things, but it, like, do you ever, you open up your phone to do a specific task. Like for me, it'll be check my calendar or put something yep. in my calendar because yep. I, I need my calendar or I forget everything. Yeah. So I'll open my phone. I'll be thinking of something. Okay. I got to put this in my calendar. And next thing you know, I'm on Instagram and yep. I'm scrolling and then I'm like, why did I open my phone yeah, again? I do and that I'll all the time. close it and I'm like, oh shit, my calendar. And then I open it up and then maybe I'll remember. But then since I'm already open, I might as well check that Facebook notification that just came up. Like this person just posted. Because you get these notifications like Monica Vandermeer posted an update. I'm like, oh, what did Monica yeah. post? Like, what did she say? Like stop and telling then, me what she posted. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a new update with Instagram though that doesn't show you notifications and I'm constantly missing notifications now. So I don't know if Instagram... Did that on purpose. I don't really understand why. Yeah. But I'm not getting as many notifications from Instagram anymore. And they, Instagram took away the like function. So, you, right? No. So that they can, don't no, see how many just, people liked your thing. I think that's the thing. Am I crazy? You can still like and like see. How you many can people. like, but can you see how many people liked your video or your post in Instagram? Like I thought they took I that think, out. Um, I'd have to check, but I think you can still. Hmm. Anyways, I am like mega addicted it's a problem and like what did i do like i remember that i was late to the game with facebook and i said why would i join facebook this is stupid i have i i have no idea why anyone would do this yeah like so i think i resisted about a year and a half and then joined facebook and then like i'm like why would people post what they're doing i don't i don't get it but you still you're you're not somebody who posts what you're doing no like i find it like i'm not that person either and with all these businesses and like you know the the podcast and stuff, I feel like I should be posting more than I do. So I think it comes naturally. Like some people just post everything. And I'm like, you're not even trying to sell yourself. Like, why are you posting what you ate for dinner? Like, I don't understand that. Like people who think we just care about their lives. Well, and then people post pictures of their babies. I get Mm -hmm. that. I mean, I like to see people. But do I want to see what you had for dinner? No. Do I want to see your babies? Probably. Yeah. But um, I think that I just belong to like so many groups, which I said, and, and I'm just like, I'm constantly being entertained mm-hmm. or, or not even being entertained. And my life, my life involvement is with people that don't care about me. I don't care about them. And I'm just sucked up for hours. Do you comment on stuff or are yes. you more of your own yes. comment too? Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I belong to a lot of these advice groups, right? right. Because I'm always looking for these, what the yeah. fucks or yeah, advice. Yeah. And so then I, I will comment my advice on something and I'll be like, and then I'll say to myself, I can't believe this person wrote this, but I won't necessarily write that. Like I'm not the Karen in the group, but I'm but thinking, you do find yourself getting involved in all the, but comments. only for a couple seconds. You know what I mean? Like once my comment is out there, Oh, then I'll see a notification that somebody liked my comment or, or responded. responded to my comment. And then I'll have to go into that comment. But I'm like, what the fuck? Like this isn't even real life. Like my real life, I'm less involved in, in real life. Might, than I am. It might be because there's not a lot going on right now, too, because of COVID. But it's still sad, and you could make your life more real. Well, let's make some steps then. Like, what are some things you can do to fix this? <laughs> I think that it's hard when like, it's... What if you just choose not to have your phone at dinner time? I Like, even the thought of that makes me go, like, it's crazy. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm not going to do that. It's like, I'm not going to go weekend without drinking. Why would I do that? It's something that makes me happy. Yeah. But what, but I need to replace it with something else. Why don't you talk to Greg? Have a conversation with him instead of scrolling. Like, because he's busy watching. He's busy scrolling his own (laughs) phone. He's busy scrolling and (laughs) watching TV. And he's going to be like, why would I? Like, why are you talking to me? I'm watching the Wire or whatever show is on. (laughs) watching the Ellen Joe. You can tell how much like TV I watch. I think reference to show from 10 years ago. Okay, so here's the thing. Like before me and Greg moved in together, I didn't 
I had no cable. Mm. I had nothing. All I watched was Netflix if it was on, and I just didn't care. Yeah. But then I would still scroll on my fucking phone. It is so an addiction. What's the like different. When I go pee, I bring my phone with me. Me too. Like, Why? Can you, can you poop without? Can you poop without Facebook? I don't even poop. What's it like to poop? But yeah, no, definitely not. Like if I'm gonna go, I definitely bring my phone. Even peeing, I'm like peeing takes two seconds. I don't even have time to look at my phone. Why yeah. am I? Why do I have my phone? But if I like, so I work in this in this office, right? And so I have my phone with me, of course, all the time. And then I'll go to the bathroom, and if I'm like, oh, I have to poop, I'm gonna go back, grab my phone yeah. to go to the bathroom. Hundred percent. It's ridiculous. I feel like we're not alone in this. Do you guys do that? <laughs> I think everybody does, but I, I I, know it's unhealthy. Like, this is a... I know that I'm doing something wrong. But everybody is doing it, too. But does it's still... It okay? yeah. Is it wrong, or is this one of those things that's just a transition of what the world is? We're all just connected to these devices. So what... Okay, so if I'm out hiking, so I'm going to Canmore and I'm hiking for the day... There's no cell service. I will often be in situations where I don't have my phone, though. Like, okay, if you... What? No. G- yeah, I'll give you lots of examples. So, okay. like, if I have people at my house, like, the night that you came over, yeah. my phone would have been somewhere in my kitchen. Like, yeah. I didn't have it on me. And yeah. if... so, Like, because I have my watch that buzzes. If somebody would have texted me, yeah. I would have looked at it, seen that it was, like, somebody just asking whatever, and I would have, like, not cared. Yeah. I wouldn't have walked over to it to, like, respond to them. Yeah. Would you do that? Well, like, if... No, I think that I... I that... In a time when I've got people over, I will tr- I will do my best to not engage. Yeah. You know, like I will like You're still put my aware of it, but, but I have people that I'm like hanging out with them in person and they have their phone on them and they're like scrolling while we're hanging oh, out. Oh, that is annoying as fuck. It's insane to me. Or like yeah. if people are, like if somebody's Or if I'm text- going out for dinner with me and my kids or me and Greg and he's scrolling, like. Yeah. No, it's not happening. If somebody texts me something that I need to respond to, like it's like a time sensitive thing or whatever, right? Like even Mm. last night I was hanging out with the neighbors and you text, hey, what time are you coming over? I was like, I left it for a second, but I was like, well, I probably should respond to her because it's like rude not to. I I don't want her to like not think I'm ignoring her or whatever, right? So I like, oh, sorry guys, just like give me a second. I need to respond to this. Like I make sure I acknowledge it so I'm not just like all of a sudden in the middle of a conversation, like zoning out and grabbing my phone. Like I find that so rude when people do that. I know. It's very, especially with the younger kids, like, all you see is people just, like, on their phone. It's, like, completely normal to be on your phone all the time. Like, everyone is just on their phone. Like, you can all be together and everyone is just yeah. on their I'm, phone. If I'm by myself, guaranteed I'm scrolling my phone. But if I'm with people, I try to keep it. Yeah. On the other side of the room. Yeah. But, and, and I think the fact that we're with people less yeah. makes, you know, like, yes. has, who are we with? Well, technically, we're not supposed to be with anybody yeah. because of the rules. So we're big rule breakers. Yeah. But. So other than you coming over, you know, once every two weeks or three yeah. weeks, I don't have yeah. anybody come over or, or I'll see my sister. But yeah. I'm just, I find that I am so disconnected from my real life. That's COVID. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, government. Like the states is but opening up. But it's not up. their fault. Yes, it is. Canada is handling it so much differently. Well, it's like, because we don't have the vaccine. And yeah. so the if you want to go back and say, yes, it's the government because they didn't, they didn't secure Handle all the COVID it, shots yeah. properly because the U.S. is almost fucking fully vaccinated. People my age are fully vaccinated and they have been for months. Yeah. Like it's, and things are opening up. Like I'm seeing pictures of people in certain states and they're like, living their lives with no masks it seems like in certain places i think that i think that that is true but i wonder what the covid cases are like yeah. like what's I, I don't know but then if you're vaccinated and you get covid it's like whatever it's just a cold so yeah i i'm assuming that you're getting vaccinated when you are allowed i i'm not opposed to the vaccine mm-hmm. i'm not in a rush to get it either so it's kind yeah. of like i'm going to end up getting it i'm sure i'm mm-hmm. not an anti-vaxxer i've gotten the rest of the vaccines i trust in all that shit but Am I running to get it and waiting in line and going to cut line? Like, no, absolutely not. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I honestly am like, I, this might be stupid to say, but if I get it, I'm like, I trust in my body enough to, I think I'll be okay. But I think that COVID is just going to keep going back to Like, mm-hmm. I think this is going to be this, you know, I know COVID is not the flu. And what they say in the news today that ICUs in Alberta are at maximum level. Yeah, which is scary. You know, and, what, like, and they said one in like every four minutes someone in India is dying of COVID. Yeah. Like, so I'm seeing this. And I'm like, holy fuck. Like, but yeah. is this just the big fear sign going, be afraid, be afraid. Yeah. And I'm just like, it. I just want to turn it all the fuck off, except for my phone, which I obviously can't turn off. Back to that. 
Uh, let's do a what the fuck. Yeah, we gotta fuck. let's get happier now, Monica. <laughs> you always do this to us. Okay, we'll be right back. And we're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, now we're time. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. Yeah. Wine and what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Oh, and we're still drinking the same wine. Weird. Three episodes in a row, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's usually Monica's job to find the what the fucks, but yeah. I thought I would do it this time. Yeah. Because, you know, I like to cruise the internet. Okay, this is a really funny one. So, am I the asshole for calling out my kid's future stepmom for treating me like a surrogate? Hmm. What does that mean? What does it mean? Okay, so I am a 29-year-old female. I dated a guy, 30-year-old male, for three months right before he left me to go back to his ex, who's also 30. Okay. So, pretty much, she's like the side piece. He ended up back with his ex. Right after we broke up, I found out that I was pregnant, and now I'm 24 weeks. So he broke up with his girlfriend, went and fucked some chick for three months, got her pregnant. Okay. I let him know, and he was happy. Turns out that his girlfriend has fertility issues, and she'd likely never be able to get pregnant naturally, and he always wanted to be a father. Getting back together was out of the question for both of us, so he's still with his girlfriend. Okay. Weird, but okay. So his name's Joe. So Joe was only allowed at the initial appointment because of covid and we found out i was having twins according to joe when he told kim that's the girlfriend she had a mental breakdown about her infertility and wanted to talk to me i met them at their house and kim stated that she wanted to be involved in my pregnancy because she would eventually be the children's stepmother she started telling me that i needed to do a home birth that i needed to formula feed so that she could have the babies half of the week and that she wanted one boy and one girl And that she wanted the kids to call her mama since they'd be calling me mommy. I shut her down and said I would make the best choices for my children and my body and I left. Kim continued to be overbearing and texted me every day about my eating habits, exercise habits, and bitching about her job wouldn't let her take maternity leave. (laughs) (laughs) At the virtual genetics counseling appointment she attended instead of Joe... And took over the whole meeting trying to talk about her family history, which isn't relevant. When it came for my 20-week level 2 scan, they allowed me one guest and Joe suggested that I take him instead of him, which I refused to do. Joe did end up coming and he found out the gender because I wanted to keep it a surprise for me so we could throw a gender reveal party. I put a pregnancy announcement on my social media And then she put up an announcement saying that they were expecting twins the non-traditional way and how blessed she was. I was irritated, but I kept my mouth shut. Then she threw a gender reveal party and posted it on social media. That's insane. I wasn't even invited. Oh my God. She's also announced that she's having a baby shower. I commented on her post and told her to stop treating me like a surrogate, that the kids weren't hers, and that Joe didn't have any claim or custody of the kids until they were born. I then called Joe and reiterated all of this and stated that I would not be seeing either of them until we went to family court and that my mother would be my birthing partner. He and Kim and some of her friends and family are saying that I'm an asshole and her mother even called and insisted that I give her one of the babies like this is the parent trap. So am I the asshole? Oh my God. And then she edited and said, I'm definitely getting a lawyer. You guys have like the people on Reddit have scared the shit out of me. I'm happy you did. I never considered before that this could have happened on purpose. (laughs) Cause I think people on Reddit were probably saying like, if she has fertility issues, are you sure that he didn't like step out of the relationship to try to like get pregnant so they could have kids, which who knows? That is crazy to me. Like, okay. So for instance, (laughs) if, if Karsten stepped, Carson yeah. stepped out on you, had babies with someone else, you'd be like, bye bye. Right? Think I could see, like, it would be a very crazy, hurtful situation. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I could see this woman, like, spiraling because not yeah. being able to have kids, like, makes you spiral. But it doesn't, it, they're not her kids. But she's going to be their stepmom. So in her mind, she's like, I'm going to have them half the time. My husband, because in her mind, like, Joe is her husband. Okay, so. I don't know what the law is, but when you give birth to your children, like, how long is it before you have to give up custody half time? Like, you don't give your newborn baby that no. you're breastfeeding to the dad. To sp- it's because It's going to depend on the situation, right? Like, you, I think... Because situation- it's not her who's in... You know, that's not the dad. I would say, like, I would make an arrangement, like, you are welcome to come over and see your babies. Yeah. But... Your wife is not allowed because this is not... She's 
throwing a gender reveal party and she's going to have a baby shower. Oh, it, it's fucking insane. Like, it is the craziest thing I've ever fucking heard. Can you heard. imagine being, like, the the Kim, her friends, and being like, we, um, we're pregnant the non-traditional way. So, so when you say then adoption. Yeah. Or surrogacy. No, what happened was my boyfriend... Got um, fuck when, somebody else. You know, when we broke up for that three months, he was like, fucking this chick. She got pregnant with twins. So I'm going to be a stepmom. <laughs> Like she's not feeling like she's a stepmom. She feels she's like I'm. I have she's, a baby. She's treating this woman like she's her surrogate. Like yeah. Going on, and then she went to the the doctors' meeting and took over the meeting, talking about her family history. Like your family history has nothing to do with no, this lady. Like, like she's insane. Part like, of me feels I would, sorry I would for her. Cut her off. Like I would not talk to her i would not have her in any meeting i would say no what happens though as as life progresses mm-hmm. kids get older kids are two three years old and they want to go to their dad's house sure she's gonna be there you can't yeah. cut her off but you can for the pregnancy yeah. and this like this like this is nothing to do with you yeah. like and i would for somebody like this i would get like a plan like a legal plan of exactly who gets who for easters and christmas like this is like one of those crazy time like this is something they make movies out of like she did update and yeah. said she's reached out to a lawyer now because she didn't actually realize how crazy it was and all the people on reddit were like um <laughs> like this is really scary like imagine you have a friend who has fertility issues could not get pregnant and then this happened to them and all of a sudden you see them posting on social media that they're having a gender reveal party and then you get an invite to a baby shower and you're like but that's crazy because it's not her baby. But wouldn't you be like, Kim, do you need help? Like, as a friend of that person? I would just say that you're crazy and you're, you're a crazy person. And the the mom of her is like, why don't you just give her one of the babies? You're having twins. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah, no problem. Like, you guys. Yeah, you're right. I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need a two for? My twins is hard. Maybe... You know what? Maybe I'll just give you both because they were so easy to get. <laughs> like, Part of me does feel sorry for her. It's like she's in a relationship. She can't get pregnant. And then her boyfriend steps out and, uh, you know, they break up or whatever. Ends up impregnating somebody right away. That yeah, would hurt. There, that would hurt her it so It would. Bad. But there are, Okay. So she's she has no issues being the surrogate mother, basically. Or, you know, being yeah. the other mom. So why not adopt? Why yeah. not foster? Like, Well, she's like, I'm not... Like, he's probably like, well, I'm not adopting. I'm about to have twins. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy shit. Like, it's a big deal to have... T- and he's probably like, oh, fuck, like, I knocked her up. Oops. Like, he's probably not... Unless it was intentional. Like, you... But... Could be. That could be on her, too. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you... Like, women who trap guys by getting pregnant is crazy. I wonder... I don't know. Like, I guess that happens, right? Is that how you got Karsten? 100%. <laughs> I waited, like, until <laughs> we were married for two years, and then I... <laughs> He wanted to have kids before me. Like, we mm-hmm. would have kids, like, earlier if it was up to him. But I was like, no, no, no. Two years you waited? After we were married. Yeah. 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 And then we were kind of like, well, I guess it's time. This is what people do, right? Like, I think it's probably time to do this I got married thing. at 21. And I had my first baby at 26. But... You were trying. But I was trying. Like, I would have had babies. And thank God I didn't have babies earlier. I'm happy with the age I had them at, to be honest. Because, mm-hmm. like, I was really immature. And, like, having kids did help me mature a bit. But I, I don't know. It does. And the thing with having babies young is... When you're in your 20s and you have babies, you have the energy to chase them and go down water slides mm-hmm. and go to the park. If you have babies at 40, women aren't doing that anymore. It's like, it's all, mm-hmm. it's not that way. No. And I think as a person though, like even if I had kids at 21, I'm not that person to go down water slides with my kids. Although I did the other night. Mm, I bet you did. Yeah. I bet you did. I went down the slide once or twice with the kids this weekend and then it was all cursed in while I sat in the hot tub. Like, that's just... But if you were 40, you wouldn't be doing that. And women are having babies later and later and later mm-hmm. now because people are, it's all about career and, mm-hmm. and getting what I want and then having babies. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I think early 20s is perfect. Yeah, like I had Colton at twenty nine or mid mid twenties, yeah. late twenties. Yeah, I, I guess like everybody's life circumstances changes. Like, is having energy more important than having maturity and money? Because like the older you get, you have like the life experience, and I think I'm a better parent at twenty nine than I would have been at twenty one because of just like 
being able to provide and yeah. just having maturity of like life. So experience. I think energy is really a big thing because, okay, so you're thinking, okay, 29 versus having babies. Cause like I said, people are having them later and later. So if you have a baby at 40 and then, then you, the, your child graduates and you're now almost 60, yeah. like all those times that you could be spending with your kids. So like for me, like I had Johnny right before I was 30 and I was doing things with him when he was 13, 14, like, Let's go rock climbing, yeah. like rock climbing walls, and let's swim and let's kayak. Well, mm -hmm. if you're pushing seventy, yeah. you're not you're not engaging yeah. with them in the same way. I guess it's like it just depends though, because a lot of people, you know, you have your kids young, so you get to live your life when you're older by yourself and yeah. whatever, or you get to live your life, do whatever the hell you want, build yourself, build your career, get established, and then have kids. There's mm. different ways of looking at it. I don't know. I guess it just depends on what yeah. you feel is more important, but. Yeah. To me, connection to that human being is the most important thing. And you think you can connect to them better when you're younger? Yeah. Yeah. I think because do your children not connect to you better when you are actually doing things with them? That's true. Like, to me, like, the times that I was able to talk to my kids are, like, when we're cycling together, when mm -hmm. we're hiking together, when we're doing things yeah. together, camping, sleeping in a tent, not, setting up a tent on the tired. ground. <laughs> yeah, tired. like, because uh, you, now you're, you know, now you have money mm -hmm. and you're going to hotels, but you're not, you're not, you know, making fun by, <laughs> yeah, nanny, your nanny's taking care of things. I don't know. My friend was a nanny to a family and like they always had at least two nannies on staff and yeah. The kids would go to the nannies instead of the parents. Yeah. Like when they had a hurt knee or whatever. Yeah. It was actually pretty sad. It's like, yeah. So you worked to have all this money and provide this great life for them. But like the kids don't want the life. They want their parents. They want, kids just need somebody to love them. And they yeah. want someone to engage with them. Mm -hmm. Which means crafting on the floor. Which means mm -hmm. coloring and swimming. And mm -hmm. like that's what they want. Totally. And that's, that, I'm assuming those are the things they're going to remember. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, is this woman, She is she the asshole or is the, the crazy person the asshole? The crazy person <laughs> is the asshole. She's way too nice. She's, <laughs> she's like, why are you putting up with that bullshit? I want a follow up and I like would prefer if they'd make a reality show about their lives <laughs> so we could be invested because I'm like, and then what happened? Like, yeah. I have so many yeah, questions. Yeah. 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 So, I agree. Uh, should we wrap this one up? Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the It's Really None of Our Business podcast with Monica and Amanda. Yeah. And uh, find us on Facebook. Join our group and hit subscribe on YouTube because we're fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we put out videos all the time and we love engagement when you guys comment on our videos and our Facebook group makes us so happy. So do it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to It's Really None of Our Business podcast with Monica and Amanda. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know all the places. If you've enjoyed this podcast, tell your friends and please rate and review us where you can. If you are brave enough to reach out and ask us for advice, we will definitely read it out on our show. We'll totally keep your name anonymous, so what do you got to lose? You can reach us by email at ask.noneofourbusiness at gmail.com. Looking forward to hearing from you guys soon. Ciao.